I teach a lot of data viz workshops, so I see a lot of graphs. And as I'm looking at all these examples, I'm keeping a mental list. I'm thinking, is this a one-time thing? I'm also thinking, is this something that I see like once in a while? And if so, if it's a once in a while challenge, it goes in a YouTube video. And if it's a, oh, tons of people struggle with this, this happens all the time, this is like a core data viz thing to learn, it goes inside an online course. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about one of those once in a while graph problems that we run into, which is this. It is a stacked column chart with tiny slices. And this is a real example, but not really. Um, so Susan, if you're watching this, you might recognize this because it's inspired very directly by your example that you brought to a workshop a few months ago. But these are not Susan's real categories. She didn't have level zero through seven, but she did have low things to high things. These are not Susan's real groups. She had different names for the groups. She had totally different numbers of people. But what she did have that happens once in a while, she had some big numbers and some little itty bitty numbers. And she had so some numbers that were so itty bitty, they were zero. It was like the absence of a number. Like nobody here was in level six. Nobody here was in level six. That happens sometimes. So what do you do if you have like teeny tiny numbers? Susan had tried, and many people had tried, a uh, stacked column chart like this. Y you can see the problem, right? I'm gonna just like make it really clear. This is this is the challenge, okay? This is like what we're trying to avoid. This is the before version. Um, because look, you can't see the tiny slices. They're, they're this tall. You can't see them. They're impossible to see. And then over here, you can't see the absence of slices. Like you would need a magnifying glass to say, okay, that's purple and that's that. And that's blue and that's that. And like, are all of them there? Which ones? It would just, it's too much work. It's too much work. So if you have a chart with teeny tiny slices, you can't stack them all on top of each other because the slices are too small or they're nothing. They're zero and there's nothing to stack. And that's weird. It's like not helping people see the distribution. I'm going to show you three afters. And the first one is my least favorite. It's a little bit better, but I, I don't, I don't love it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm probably going to red X this one. You know me, I don't love clustered charts like this, but what's better about it is you can see the little stacks. They're teeny tiny, but you can see them. You can also see the zero. For zeros, you can see like the lack of something a little bit better. This one's not formatted though. I hate that Excel does this and it puts the legend down here when like the categories should go under the bars. In all my spare time, ha, right, ha to spare time, I'll make a YouTube video later about like how to fix this and get the category labels in the right place. For now, I'm gonna say like, I don't know. This is Anne's least favorite chart of all time. A little bit better, but let, let's keep going. I want to show you some more ideas that might not be on your mind yet. Maybe today's the day to open your mind to this. Okay, here's one idea for the teeny tiny slices, which is a small multiples chart. Okay, instead of the stacks being stacked, or instead of them being side by side by side by side this way with impossible to read labels, why don't we just have one chart for this thing? group A and one chart for this thing. You can still see the tiny little stacks. You can see the zeros. Do you see how the level information here, the labels are in the right spot. They're not in a separate legend anymore. I did format this one. I'm going to give this a check <laughs> because I thought this one was promising. Now you could have small multiples this way, two columns side by side. You could have two sets of columns on top of each other, you know, top and bottom, like I've done here. You could have two sets of bars side by side, two sets of bars this way. You have to kind of think of this as like, I think of it as like a Tetris game or a puzzle, or I think of it as like, if I'm packing my SUV with seven people's stuff to go away for a vacation, I have to fit the double stroller, the cooler, the suitcases, the, the diaper bag. I have to fit all that stuff in like very carefully. So in my mind, I'm thinking like, should these be arranged this way or this way? There's multiple correct answers of how you could arrange these small multiples. Another example with another arrangement is the pyramid. It's sort of a population pyramid. Traditionally, population pyramids are age and sex. This one doesn't have age. It doesn't have sex. It has 
two different groups with levels. So it's not like technically a population pyramid, but it's a good option for uh, ordinal data. There's a natural order, order, ordinal or sequential. It goes from like lowest to highest or, or flip it upside down if you need to for your project. It's two histograms like this. So you can easily compare the distribution and see, are these symmetrical? Yeah, in this pretend example, they are very symmetrical or not. You might have an or not situation in your real project. Now, these are a little bit more advanced to make. They're a non-native chart. You can see I have a helper table over here with some like placeholder values right there. This one should say placeholder right there to label it for future and, and for you. I'm going to link down below this video though, to a fuller tutorial about how to make these pyramids. If you'd like to try that option. All right, let's review though. Are we all in agreement that when you have teeny tiny slices or zeros stacked charts don't work, you need to at least have them side by side. So you can see the itty bitty slices and then take it a step further, explore different layouts, explore like small multiples charts or explore pyramids. If you want to download this spreadsheet and try some of these yourself, just look down below the video and you can download it for free.